Marine rescue radio operators are the voice of safety on the airwaves. They keep watch around the clock, making sure boaters in trouble get help fast. During the daytime, most calls go back to the closest radio base. But in the evening, calls are centralised to our state communication centre. My name's Brad Whitaker, and this is Marine Rescue TV. Well, thanks for joining us. In this episode, we'll catch up with our fishing guru, Michael Guest, about using your marine radio, and we'll get on the tools for a special project with members from our Marine Rescue Port Macquarie unit. But first, Phil Campbell takes us behind the scenes at our State Communications Centre for the first day of operations, and then we'll head up to beautiful Cape Byron to meet one of our marine radio operators. Well, it's great to see today so many smiles on so many faces, and I've certainly been here uh, over recent weeks and months seeing the effort that's gone in to get this facility to where it is. It's a huge amount of effort. It's run solely on the back of hard work by our volunteers and our members. My name's Helen, and I'm here at the new State Communications Centre Marine Rescue Sydney. As you can see, it's still pitch black here, middle of winter. And this is our first day of operation. I'm sitting in a brand new workstation. This is the first time a radio operator has sat here. And what sort of calls would they get in here to the centre? Um, anything and everything from a standard logon, a vessel logon for a coastal or local fishing voyage, to people asking for information about the marine environment, or an emergency incident, or a simple assist. This facility is purpose built, it's equipped with all the latest technology to make sure that rescue resources can be deployed as quick as they possibly can to make sure that we're living up to our mission of saving lives on the water. Can you tell me, Julie, uh, what is the main role of the Marine Rescue Radio Operator? The main role is to save lives. Basically, it's very important for people that are in distress on the water that they contact someone 24-7 if they get into any difficulties. And we have 24-7 radio coverage up and down the coast of New South Wales to assist people who are in distress. So that's the main role. There are many other services that we provide to boaters who aren't necessarily in a life-threatening situation or in trouble on the water. Can you tell us a bit about those, please? Well, we encourage all people that are going out to log on and log off so that we know who's on the water and who's safe, basically. Also, we provide weather information, anyone who need, may be needing the latest weather report or conditions on the bar if they're coming into any particular ports up and down the coast. If somebody wanted to become a marine rescue radio operator, what uh, advice would you have, particularly if they've got no experience in radio and they're not really sure about uh, boating experience either? Well, people come from all walks of life. So you don't need previous boating or radio experience. We're all capable of learning. If you think you're a little bit unsure, contact your local marine rescue uh, station. They will more than willingly help you all up and down the coast and they'll welcome you to come in, speak to someone in the, in the particular office or centre and they will run you through and show you what to do. Can you tell us a bit about what it's like to work in such a spectacular location? Coming up here is a pleasure. The weather is always different, but the views are spectacular. The lighthouse, lots to see and lots to enjoy working up here. Well, thanks, Phil. If you'd like to become a radio operator, hit the Become a Volunteer tab on the Marine Rescue New South Wales website. Now, logging on and logging off is super easy with your marine radio or the free marine rescue smartphone app. Make sure you do it on every voyage. Now it's time to catch up with Michael Guest to talk about the benefits of using your marine radio. G'day, Michael Guest here. On behalf of my mates at Marine Rescue New South Wales, just have a quick chat about your marine radio. If you haven't got one, why not? You've got to have one. In this boat, I've got a VHF radio. Um, I spend a lot of time way out to sea in all sorts of remote locations, fishing right on dark. I love fishing in that sort of period when, when uh, things like mulloway are going to bite, and quite often you catch them in the middle of the night. They're a, they're a pretty cool fish. So what it does mean is means that I'm, I'm offshore in all sorts of situations, and you've got to have that backup. 
Uh, mobile phones are great these days, but the coverage can be limited. And uh, people like Marine Rescue New South Wales, who are doing a fantastic job, they're covering that radio 24-7. So you can always give them a call. Uh, you can get weather updates, radio checks, all those sorts of things. What we might do at the moment, I'll just turn it on, give Marine Rescue a call and get a radio check to make sure the radio is working perfectly. Marine Rescue, Lake Macquarie, Marine Rescue, Lake Macquarie. This is Real Action on Channel 16 requesting a radio check. Real Action, this is Marine Rescue, Lake Macquarie. Could you go to Channel 19? Over. Going up, so we'll go up to Channel 19, Channel 19. Marine Rescue, Lake Macquarie, here is uh, Real Action requesting a radio check. Real Action, this is Marine Rescue, Lake Macquarie. You're coming in loud and clear on channel 16 and 19. And for your information, the bar is calm and the wind is a southerly about 10 knots. Over. Thank you, uh, Marine Rescue Lake Macquarie. It's a shame I'm not going fishing today because that sounds like it's a pretty nice day to scoot across the bar. Uh, thanks, thanks for that information and thank you for the radio check. Real action out. Good, thank you. Marine Rescue Lake Macquarie out. There you go, I'll just turn that off. How cool is it to know that these guys and girls have volunteers saving lives on the water, which is what uh, Marine Rescue uh, New South Wales is all about. And they're there looking after us. Uh, radios, marine radios are in a really harsh environment. Saltwater is, is quite corrosive to wiring. Make sure your wiring's right. Get in your boat, turn your radio on. If it doesn't work, then you really shouldn't be going out. Um, so that's one thing to think about. Make sure your aerial is in an upright position. Make sure your aerial connection's good. Make sure it's nice and tight. It's not swinging around. Because when things really go bad, that, that little bit of gear there, that radio, is the difference between possibly uh, you getting your life saved and not. Don't forget, if you require emergency assistance, the international call for help is simple. Mayday, mayday, mayday. And that will swing everybody into action, including Marine Rescue New South Wales. And don't forget, uh, they're our volunteers saving lives on the water. Well, thanks for that advice, Guesty. Now, in March of 2021, much of the New South Wales coastline was impacted by a significant flood event. And five months on, Prime 7 News caught up with members from Marine Rescue Port Macquarie helping a family rebuild their house after significant flooding. The Port Macquarie Marine Rescue Unit is helping a Kendall family rebuild. On March 19th, floodwaters engulfed this River Street home. The water and mud still dried to the cladding outside. The damage so substantial, Amy, Greg and their son Midas are still living in a caravan in their parents' backyard. Love my parents, but you know, you do need your own space, your own shower, <laughs> your own toilet. <laughs> the family hasn't just lost their home, but everything they owned inside. Yeah, no clothes, nothing, nothing. Been a big stress for everybody, definitely, especially for the young fella, like losing everything. All my games. Like, not even video games, like board games. All my toys, they got thrown out. So, yeah, a whole lot of things. But this week, Amy, Greg and Midas have started to see a transformation they could have never expected. St Agnes Parish putting the call out to the Marine Rescue Unit, many of the volunteers having a background in a trade. Didn't have me hopes up. Did not have me hopes up at all until the first crowbar went to the wall. And then it was like, yay. It's happening and like the donations and the people are just phenomenal. There's you know, families out there that haven't got homes yet and, and, and they're still living in caravans and at friends' places. That And secondly, the community sp supports us as an organisation so much it's good to be seen to be giving back to the community too. Once the property is livable again, Amy, Greg and Midas can start to replace some of the furniture, white goods and memories they had started collecting in their home. The community support just as heartwarming as seeing new plaster on the walls. No words to describe it, honestly. Samantha Crow, Prime 7 News. Our members continually amaze me with their dedication and service to their communities. Now if you've enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and also the bell so you can be notified about future episodes. Until next time, stay safe on the water.